station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station, we are ready for the event. Wolf Blitzer, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Wolf Blitzer. How do you hear me? Hey, sir, we have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Nicole, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard. And I want to make sure it's Nicole Ayers, right? Ayers? Yes, sir, that's right. All right, perfect. Ann McLean, McLean, right? That is correct, Ann McLean. Thank you for asking. Just Wolf. All right, we're coming to you in a, in a few seconds. Uh, we're just in a commercial breakdown, then we'll talk. Thank you. Thirty seconds in commercial break. Ten seconds to segment. Happening now, you're looking at live images from the International Space Station, where seven people have been living since their mission began back in April. The ISS crew includes NASA astronauts Nicole Ayers and Anne McLean, and they're joining me now live, some 250 uh, miles above the Situation Room. Nicole, where are you over Earth right now? Hey, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're at in the world. Um, welcome aboard the International Space Station. We're excited to talk to you this morning, uh, this afternoon, uh, about all the fantastic things that we're doing up here. Um, and you know, it's kind of crazy. We are um, out over the ocean right now. We generally fly over the ocean for the most <clears throat> majority of our time. We're actually out in the Pacific um, and we will go over the southern portion of South America today. So um, we we see a lot of the world, but mostly ocean. It's surprising uh, once you get up here, the point of view that we have, we see a lot of ocean, but we do get some amazing land views um, and we're going to go right over the Andes here in a few. And walk us through what a typical day up in space looks like for you. Yeah, every day is a little bit different, but we do have some structure. The structure of our days and weeks are actually pretty important to maintain our mental health and sanity. So um, it kind of sounds unexciting, but it's a little bit um, kind of banker's hours. Uh, we kind of do our nine to five, except for our nine to five is 7.30 to 7.30. So Monday through Friday, we wake up, we have a meeting, a sync meeting with all our mission control centers around the world. We talk to not only Houston, but Huntsville and Japan and Munich and Moscow. Uh, and so we sync up in the morning and then throughout our day we do about six to seven hours of either space station maintenance or science. Um, right now we have some visiting Axiom crews so we're helping uh, with the private astronaut mission. We do a couple hours of exercise actually as a countermeasure to bone and muscle loss uh, during that day and then we, uh, we definitely have a little some breaks in there. And then the weekends are off except for some cleaning uh, for the most part. And then anytime we have a dynamic operation, that would be a spacewalk or a visiting vehicle docking, anything like that, then that kind of throws our schedule off, but uh, we're pretty used to that. Nicole, what kind of research is being conducted during this mission? 
We actually are doing a ton of research up here, uh, especially when the Cargo Dragon was up here from SpaceX. Um, <clears throat> it brings a ton of science up, and then it also takes it back down. Um, so actually, Ann and I worked on some DNA research. Recently, we just concluded um, a ring shear drop experiment, so looking at protein structures and using computer models to figure out how they shear or break, um, and that actually will help inform how we build medications that can counter cancer, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. So we're doing some really uh, important and neat research that we get to be a part of. Um, it's a privilege to spend just a few minutes each day working on a science experiment that scientists have spent their entire lives building to learn more about uh, the, the earth, to learn more about medication, technology, all sorts of things. Um, you know, at any given moment up here on the International Space Station, there are over 200 science experiments going on, both inside. Uh, every single rack that you see here has a payload or a science experiment going on right now, and then outside the station, looking out at the universe, and then also looking back at Earth. So we're doing a ton to help inform how we do life on Earth and life out further in the universe. It's very exciting for me to be speaking live uh, with two astronauts who are on the International Space Station. First time I've done that. And Nicole, let me follow up. I know you both were part of uh, one of the few all-female spacewalks. What was that like? Yeah, so it was actually my first spacewalk. Uh, Anne's old hat at spacewalking at this point. But, um, you know, I think that uh, our spacewalk is, was a huge success and a huge testament to teamwork and how many different people have to work on just this one event. So, you know, we were the two that got the glory and we got to go out the door and everybody knows our names. But, you know, Talk and Johnny were our, uh, were our crewmates who helped suit us up. We worked with a bunch of people on the ground. You know, Marcos Barrios is another astronaut uh, from my class who worked with us and he was the communicator that talked to us. Deanna Trujillo was our flight director and she led the entire ground team through a bunch of adversity and a bunch of game, chan game plan changes. Um, and I, so I think it was a true testament to teamwork, uh, you know, the way that we got out the door, we got all the tasks done that needed to get done, the high priority task with the antenna. We got some game plan changes in the middle of it and we were able to problem solve and figure out how to leave the station in a better state. Uh, and then also do a little bit of maintenance on the station. So, um, you know, it was, it was pretty fantastic to see the team work uh, together, but you know, can't beat the view through the, the visor, you know, when it's just you in a spacesuit and your buddy outside, um, it's pretty fantastic. It's, a, it's amazing and, and fantastic uh, what the work you're doing. We are so uh, proud of both of you uh, and the entire crew. Thanks so much for doing it. And let me follow up with this question. Why is space exploration so important and what do you think it will look like in five, 10, 20 years from now? Yeah, I think it, this is a really exciting time in space exploration, and we're really hitting an exponential growth and expansion. Um, so I think 20 years ago, it would have been easy to project five years. I will tell you honestly right now, I don't know what the next five years hold. Um, there are so many new companies, new countries, new partnerships, and new programs coming into play uh, that it is an absolutely um, interesting time in space exploration. Um, and you ask why why we explore space, and I, I honestly think that that's a different answer for each of us. Uh, we as a society explore space because as societies we always ask what's next, what's around the next corner. You know, if we go back hundreds of years, thousands of years, people said what's across this land, what's on the other side of this ocean. And then when we, we kind of filled in, we figured out our earth a little bit, we said okay, how do we take to flight? How do we go higher in flight? And the next logical place is, is what else is out there. And humans have always had that propensity to explore. So maybe why we explore is because you're one of those explorers that deep down in your heart feels a passion and, and wonders what else is out there. Maybe you are an engineer and you are fascinated by the technology that it's going to take to get there. Maybe you're an artist or a storyteller and you're fascinated by the human condition and being able to be part of something like that. And I think for each of us, why we're part of this is different. And I think uh, another important question would be what type of society we would be if we didn't explore. And I don't think that's a society any of us would want to be with so, or be in. So yeah, I think point. over the next five years, I'm, I'm really thrilled yeah, and very point. lucky to be part of this. And we're thrilled to have both of you there at the International Space Station. And when you're back here on Earth, I hope we get a chance to meet. Thanks to both of you for all that you are doing. Please thank the entire crew as well. And to our viewers, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Inside Politics with Dana Bash starts right now. 
Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you to all participants. Station, we're now resuming operational audio communications.